maybe that was a failure in one viewpoint, one perspective. Mm -hmm. But here was my success, and I can pull inspiration from that. I firmly believe that we are never given what we can't overcome. One is uplifting you, one is sinking you. We know inherently that we're stronger together. I would have to understand 100% what it is like to be Austin, and you would have to understand 100% what it is like to be Amber. Hi, and welcome to the Heart Leader Podcast, where our heart and our mind align. I'm your host, Amber, and I'm here with Austin as we continue our journey navigating into silencing your inner critic. Today, we have a very fun topic as we are diving into silencing your inner critic starter kit. We're going to go through all 13 of the tools in this toolkit, but if I can take a moment right now and ask you for a favor, if you, wherever you are, unless you're driving, of course, and listening to us that way, can take just a moment and click the subscribe button wherever you're listening to us. It helps us out so much. It lets us know that we're creating content that's meaningful for you. And it makes certain that when we release things like this Silence Your Inner Critic starter kit, that you never miss one. So we're going to continue now. And we're going to go through each and every one of these, what we're kind of calling superpowers, as you build up your inner champion so that it can silence that evil and villainous inner critic that is living within each of us. We're going to go through all 13 of these, spending a couple minutes on each and every one of them, because what that will do for you is really give you the insights so when you're in your everyday and that inner critic pops in there and starts saying, oh, wait a second, you're not good enough to handle this. What do you think you're doing? Your inner champion can rise up and say, wait a second, not only am I good enough to do this, I have all of the skills and all of the tools in my starter kit to be more than ready to take this on. So your everyday life is going to change because you're going to have all of these new resources available to your inner champion to know that you can silence that inner critic like that. So Austin, you ready to dive in and start to run through this starter kit so we can empower everyone to just get in there and silence that inner critic or at least begin to? Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is a kind of an exclusive sneak peek into the book. Um, this is directly from the book. So uh, really excited to share this. I mean, these are 13 tools to really help people build a, a positive self-relationship. That's kind of what we're talking about with the book. And this is this is that uh, positive mental mind frame yeah. aspect. And so, it, and this is really, really key to, like we all need a starter kit for something. And so when it comes to building a self-relationship, well, you gotta have a positive mind frame first. And the more that you can get into that flow and you have the tools that can support you in all, I mean, this covers a lot of different things in your life. So I know 13 may not seem like a lot because we have very, we all have a lot of things going on in our lives, but you'd be surprised at how much this, this covers a strong base. Well, and when you think about it, 13 to have at your disposal throughout your day, it's a lot to bring back to your cognitive or your mental recall, right? Yeah. So when it comes to a starter kit, you don't desire to have a ton of things <laughs> in there. If you go and you pull out your basic toolkit, for just getting everyday things done. There's not a ton of things in there either. Right. So that's the point. We don't desire to overload ourselves. We want to have just what we need. And this is what I use. Like I practice what I preach, right? So I want to make certain that it's simple enough for me to use as well. I'm busy. I don't have a lot of time. So I need to make certain that it's streamlined enough that I can just quickly recall 
feel empowered, my inner champion stands up and is like, I got you and can make it happen. I agree. And each one of these are are designed to actually be implemented right away. So if if all you take is just one of these 13 and just test it, like it's actually you can implement it pretty much immediately. And that's what I think is one of the best parts of the starter kit. Yeah, I agree. Well, you want to kick us off? Sure, sure. Yeah. And just to let you all know, we will be reading because we do not want to miss anything or mess it up. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, the first one is embrace the learning journey. And this is so key because it's really easy to get caught in all of the anxiety and the stress and the pressure and the fear. And that's really all that we've been talking about with the inner critic, right? And so that's why we want to like put this number one first, like embrace the learning journey. Uh, the inner critic can be shifted, right? And so uh, just shifting that mind frame from a, a negative to a positive. Yeah. And when you embrace the learning journey, then you understand that every little mistake that you think is so big is actually an opportunity to learn. And you embrace it as that. It's like, oh, okay. So it's not the end of the world, as I know I can sometimes feel that it is oh my gosh, I made a mistake. It's like, no, there's an opportunity for me to learn something about myself or the process. So Yeah. And how many times have we achieved something and when looking back, we're like, you know, that mistake was critical to me getting to where I am now. Yes. You know, and the whole thing was that it was part of the journey all, all along. It wasn't a side step or a back step. It was just, it was actually a forward step in in the disguise of something that seemed negative or not part of the process. But we can't know when we're in the middle of it. It feels so intense and it feels so overwhelming. And so that's kind of that beauty of of looking back and being like, oh yeah. I mean I know I can look back at so many things. I'm like right in the thick of it. I'm just, oh, there's so much going on. Like, how am I ever going to get there? And then I realized that that was a key point that actually got me to where I needed to go. Yeah. Sorry, I just have the friends reference Unagi. Unagi, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the next one is challenge your inner critic's narrative, mm. right? And we talked about this a lot in a couple of previous episodes, but this is where I envision my inner champion so often in that hero stance, looking my inner critic square in the eye and saying, prove it right? We have to be willing to challenge what our inner critic is saying to us when it says, you can't do that. Because a lot of times the narrative that our inner critic is spinning in our heads is based on something so far in the past that we've learned and we are stronger and far past whatever it is that we're thinking about. Mm -hmm. And so that narrative is a false narrative. But unless we take that superhero stance and look at square in the eye and say, wait a second, but that's, is that still true? Mm -hmm. Give me proof, show me, then it's going to have a stranglehold on us. And we can challenge that narrative and we can give ourselves the other side of the discussion. And that comes from that inner champion and that inner knowing that, yes, maybe we made a mistake once that that inner critic is utilizing, but how many times have we gotten it right since then? Mm -hmm. How many times have we shown a capability in a similar area? So we have to be willing to step forward and say that to ourselves and to stop letting it be like Teflon where the good slides off <laughs> and actually hold on to that part of ourselves too. Absolutely. And this is, I love these two together because they kind of uh, flow off of each other, right? Uh, number one can kind of embrace, can kind of work with number two. Like if you want to re reframe your inner critic narrative, go back and recognize how many times have you gotten to where you want to be by 
you know, it seemed like a mistake, but it was actually a key aspect. And you did get there. How many times have you overcome so many different aspects? So it's, it's like they can fuel each other if you have more intention and purpose behind each one of them. Exactly. What's the next one? Uh, set achievable goals. Uh, this one is really important because what's the saying where we overestimate what we can do in six months, but we underestimate what we could do in three years. Yes. Right. And so it's all about achievability. And so, you know, if we can really, no matter how big or small, if we know like in our heart that, Hey, I, we can achieve this or I can achieve this, then and there's a stronger chance you're actually going to do it. But when it feels like so grandiose and it's great to have, like, it's great to dream. We want to dream. We want to dream, dream big, dream amazing. Cause that's how we move forward as a species and as a collective, that's how we evolve. But every big idea started with small steps and those, each one of those steps were achievable steps to get to the big dream and, and then achieve it down the line. So I think that's kind of a key aspect and, and one I know I've, I struggled with, and coming right out of the gate out of school, I was like, oh, there's so much I want to do in this life. And and uh, and so, yeah, <laughs> definitely found a new way to approach things and, and really focusing on those achievable goals, setting them and then and then uh, feeling good about achieving them, too. Yeah. When you break things down into smaller parts, you feed yourself that positive reinforcement that then helps the inner champion with challenging the narrative, mm-hmm. right? And again, it goes back to all of the above. So each one of these somewhat supports the other. So when you have those wins from having the achievable goals and then achieving those goals, then you challenge the narrative with the wins from those and you embrace the learning from each one of those steps and stages. So instead of, we don't come out of the womb running. Mm. We say this so much. It's like we have to take those steps. But what we desire to do so often in our quick win mentality these days is to think we're going to go from here all the way to the primary goal. And we forget the steps and the stages that it takes to get there. Mm. And even for us to get to where we are right now, it took a lot of learning and falling on our face. And we still have a lot more learning and falling on our face to go before we get to our primary goal. So it is just a journey. Yeah. Yeah. Releasing that perfectionism. You know, I'm sure we'll touch that's, that. I was going to say, that's on but, the list. But yeah, but that's, you know, part <laughs> of this. How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's definitely part of this because it's it's not necessary for progress and success. I mean, that's yeah. that's key. And that's what's so beautiful about achievability. Like when you can really focus on what you can truly achieve, then you're not worried about how perfect it is. You just, your focus is on, hey, I achieved it. Now I can move into the next one. Yes. You love that. So next on the list, we have reflect the positive. This is one of my all-time favorites because it talks about being the reflection that you desire to see around you. And that has to first start within you. And the inner critic loves for you also to be the reflection that it wants to see. Right. So same, same. So within, so without. Right. Mm. And the same is true. So inside, so outside, so inside. So if you live in a cluttered space, you start to feel very cluttered inside. Mm. Um, If you feel very cluttered inside, you start to live in a cluttered space. Simultaneously, if the inner critic has a grip on your inside, then you start to become critical and you start to see everything in a critical way. But if you desire to be surrounded by positive people and you desire to be a positive reflection, then you have to become that positive reflection to see the positive and to be the positive. Mm -hmm. And that comes from your inner champion. 
And that comes from the recognition that, hey, I desire to be in a positive environment. So therefore, I must be that positive spark that creates the positive environment. And we talked about that in last week's episode with one of our clients, Sarah, who realized that about someone in her life and how the inner critic was like taking a stranglehold. And when she realized that her niece was looking to her as her primary mentor and point of inspiration, she's like, I need to be that positive reflection. And that was her impetus for saying, okay, then I desire to be that for her. I need to be it within myself. That's, that's beautiful. I mean, that's, it does make sense that if our goal is to create a positive mental mind frame that we do need to be able to reflect positivity and you know that's not to negate or say that negativity doesn't exist right and i think that's that's one of the misconceptions that people have and it's like you know the idea of like toxic positivity and all these things that are centered around that right we're not saying like just by being positive immediately eliminates sadness and negativity and all these things it doesn't it just creates a framework in which to help you shift from one, from a negative to positive much quicker than than stewing in the negativity. Yes, exactly. And feel your feels 100%. Yeah. Yeah. If you're having a bad day, have the bad day. But then understand that you get to choose how long that duration is because it will be your inner critic who will hold on to that. Mm-hmm for as long as you desire to be with it. And so then you know you have tools that can begin to help you pull out of it. And we're not saying this replaces any medical. We're saying this is in addition to any support you may need beyond that. Yes. Right? Well said. Next. Yeah, so much like the last one where it's... uh, we kind of are, are the common denominator in, in our story across all experiences. Um, shift your perspective on failure. Um, so like much like you need to reflect that positivity is like, okay, once you've reflected that positivity, it's important to uh, shift it, shift the thought process, shift the whole viewpoint on it um, because no one outside of you can do that for you. You have to be, the, you know, it's almost like you have to take responsibility as that common denominator, and it's up to you to make that choice. How we view things in perspective is all choice. And so the more that we can take our ownership over that, uh, the more that that can actually be integrated into how we think, feel, and do. Yeah. And shifting perspective is not easy. No. Um, it's not as though we can just walk from one side of the room to the other side of the room (laughs) and shift our mental perspective. It's a little more challenging when we're inside of our inner sanctum Mm -hmm. to shift that perspective. But if you begin to use some of these other tools, it allows you, that's the super secret, right? Yeah. That's how you begin to shift your inner perspective. And see your critic from outside of being, embodying that critic, right? Because it's, it's not easy. When the critic takes that hold, you feel like it is you. And it is, but it's not fully you. It's language that has been created inside of you and created outside of you and fed in that suddenly pulls you away from who you actually are. Hmm. And so the moment you can shift your perspective and look at it as something other than who you truly are, then that's shifting perspective as well, Hmm. which is why we continuously talk about, look at it like an inner champion, inner inner critic, so that that in itself is shifting your perspective. Love it. My dad always said that uh, feedback is the breakfast of champions. Yes. And so if we can reflect the positive and shift our perspective on failure, then feedback allows us to become that inner champion. Yes. I like it. Yes. It's like your, what was it? The Wheaties? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah it always stuck with me. And I, I really liked it. Yeah. 
I love it too. <laughs> All right. Celebrate small wins. Ah, this is another breakfast of champions <laughs> kind of thing. Yes. Um, when you are consistently celebrating your your achievements, your small wins, then that takes what we call that Teflon approach for the positive because that negative brain bias loves to spin mm. and every bad thing just sticks like cement or Velcro stuck, right? But every positive thing just tends to just want to slide away. But when we celebrate those small wins, those start to stick more and more and more. And it's like that whole avalanche effect stops and it becomes more of a programmed pattern for us to actually recognize when we're doing things well. And we stop kind of thinking, oh, I am, I'm not able. And we start thinking, I am able because I see myself consistently doing it. And it's self-confidence and self-esteem that starts to build up because we realize that the narrative that our inner critic has been feeding us has been a false narrative. Because now, going back to challenging that inner critic, we're not just doing it with our inner champion standing there at a face-off. We actually have proof. So now we have a major weapon from the outside also coming in and saying, not only do I believe it just because I believe it, but I actually see it in action. Absolutely. And that's, that's where all of, again, all of these, each one leads to the next and then they support the, the ones above too. It's, it's amazing how it all kind of flows. And so I love, I love celebrating my small wins and it does help me understand how to create achievable goals and reframe and reflect the positive. And it's like all of this kind of comes together so beautifully. And so you might latch on to one of these, but you might find yourself naturally doing multiple of them, uh, which does make it a little bit easier to actually put into practice. Yes, exactly. Which leads to the next one. <laughs> of let go of perfectionism. Yeah, easier said than done. <laughs> I know a lot of people struggle with this one, especially because perfectionism can be very paralyzing. And it's hard to think about celebrating your small wins when you're so focused on it having to be perfect. Then it's like, it kind of feels like the opposite. It's like, it's like you can't win at all. And so letting go opens the door for that. You realize that, as we've talked about so many times, that perfection in essence is stagnation so why why do we want to strive for something that keeps us from growing that's not exciting to me maybe for other people like hey, you know we're all we're all unique and so i can't speak for that but I, that, that doesn't excite me stagnation does not excite me so maybe perfectionism if there was such thing as perfect it's more the process of continuing to grow and like that's what i that's what it helps me understand how to let go of perfection because it's like, I don't like what I'm letting go of is a result. What I'm focusing on is the process. And so then that way I can start to allow myself to have the, the small wins and reframe things and really move. And I get out of my own way is basically what's occurring. Yeah. And we find ourselves doing it even with the podcasts, yeah. you know, we'll, yeah. we'll watch one back and it'd be like, oh my goodness, should we, what about this? And it's amazing the very thing that we get so nitpicky about we'll get feedback that someone really liked that part yeah true and if we had stuck with what we would have considered perfect and said oh no we have to redo that or we need to cut that part out then something someone else appreciated and actually gained value from would have been removed yeah. So what is perfect? What is perfect for us wouldn't then have removed value for someone else. So we have to be willing to release this notion 
of perfection in some way as well. So letting go of perfectionism is realizing that our standard of what perfect is may not be the same standard of what someone else's ideal of perfection is. Mm -hmm. Which makes the whole thing an illusion anyways. (laughs) Yes, in in most ways. (laughs) The next one, practice makes progress. And this one was a game changer for me because I had always grown up hearing practice makes perfect, Mm -hmm. which then fed into the whole need for perfectionism. So it was like this little vicious cycle that my inner critic would, I was like the dog chasing its tail. Right. And so, yes, practice is so necessary because the more you practice, the more progress you make and you, your skills always increase and you have some level of mastery in that area, but it doesn't mean that you master it, at least from my view. Now, I'm not telling anyone else how to perceive it, but the moment for me that I hear that I've mastered a skill, then I feel like I can just stop, like I'm done, I can move on. But for me, it's important to continuously be a student of everything, even things that I feel like I have mastery in, because everything is always growing, changing, evolving, which means new things are going to be added, even in things I have mastery in. Yeah. So I always need to be open, but being willing to practice and practice and practice means that that mastery will always continue to expand too. Mm -hmm. That is the same for helping our inner critic be silenced. Mm -hmm. The moment we think we silence that inner critic and it's done, we find it's still continual practice. And we haven't failed if the inner critic comes back up and is suddenly there again. It just means that we need to continue the practice of silencing our inner critic. I love that. This one was really, I'm the same way. It was like where practice makes perfect. And just to kind of continue to embellish on on, what, on every beautiful thing you just said, because it really impacted me. It was, it was really in golf, right? Because one of the keys to better golf is practicing. Like It's really hard to play. And so the more you practice, the better you get. And I always heard practice makes perfect, practice makes perfect. And what I found out through the process is that the more I practice, like let's say I'm hitting the ball the best I ever have and I keep practicing and practicing. What I found out was that ended up turning into a new saying where practice makes problems. Mm-hmm. And that was fascinating to me. Because I realized in, while I was striving for perfection with it, when I was playing my best, I found out that I was spending so much time overthinking what I was doing that I turned something that I was really, like, really, really great into something really, really poor. And so I'd get really caught up in that. And so the perfection, you know, that's where letting go of perfection. And, and I was forgetting about the progress that I was making. I was so focused on the result of perfect that I ended up creating problems where none of them, if I just let go. I would have been fine. It's just maybe I focus on some instead of hitting golf balls. Maybe I just focus on putting. I, I definitely had room for improvement there, or chipping. I had room for improvement there, or visualization, or uh, strategy. I mean, there's so many other aspects. It's like I didn't. Why do I need to be the most perfect ball striker of all time when it was already great? Like, okay, now shift to the next. So that's kind of like where progress isn't necessarily limited to one area. If you feel that you've gotten to a point where you have and you're in that mastery level like you're talking about, then make make a pivot and kind of move into where you can then bring that understanding and mastery into that next level of something else and, and keep it going. And that's where progress is. It's progress is continuous. It's not result and finish. Yes, exactly. And when you have that mental model, mm-hmm. Then if the inner critic rears up and says, but you didn't do that good enough, Mm -hmm. you can say, I know I wasn't, that wasn't my intention. Yeah. Where, where did the inner critic go from there? Right. Right. And sometimes you just have to like, you have to believe in yourself that you have learned it enough 
to implement it. Yes. Because if I, when I was on the golf course and I'm hitting it well, you know, on the range and I go onto the golf course and I don't hit it, like I just watched myself, I would kind of shut down. Yeah. Because I was so focused on the result. And so that happens in life. When we practice something, we're attempting to stay in that area. We, then we, when, when it doesn't go exactly the way we thought, then we freeze. And it's like, that's what we talked about in, in Frozen by Fear, right? And so that's, that's where this is so important. That, and it's more than just face value with practice makes progress. There's so many nuanced aspects of it, which is why I feel like it's important we're kind of sharing a little bit more on this one because ultimately everything that we do in life is a practice. It's never done. So the more we can embrace that, then the better we can get at these skill sets. Yeah. All right. Continuing our practice of navigating through this list. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have counter negative self-talk, which is a big one because the inner critic will not simply leave it at the inner critic feeding you negative self-talk. It wants you to join the party. Mm -hmm. It doesn't like being by itself. It wants to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And so it will cause you to start saying negative things about yourself as well. And you have to reach a point where you're willing to counter that negative self-talk, whether it is your inner critic feeding you those lines, or it is really you saying those things to yourself, sometimes aloud. Like I've even caught myself saying, why am I being so stupid? Mm -hmm. Right. And I have a feeling I'm not alone mm -hmm. in being someone who has done that mm -hmm. or idiot, yeah. you know, when you do something, but that matters, even if it is just an off the cuff thing. Mm -hmm. And so it isn't whether we say it or we don't say it, right? It's going to happen sometimes. It's how do we counter it if it happens? How do we hit the back button yes. <laughs> and then go, okay, I just called myself an idiot. Mm -hmm. How do I counter that so that I can reset that? I can go, okay, I just called myself an idiot. <laughs> that was silly. What I meant to say was that action was not the best action I could have taken. I am highly intelligent because I recognized that that was not the best action I could have taken. So I am intelligent. The action was not my best choice. Mm. I'm going to make a different choice next time. That's such a key factor is recognizing that we aren't our own. You know, we aren't one action. So thank you for bringing that forward because it, when those things happen, it's hard to separate those. And that is so, so key to countering negative self-talk. Uh, and I think that's the fundamental basis of this. And you just nailed it. It's like, hey, we aren't our actions. And we have a, every now moment is a new opportunity to make a new choice. And in that new opportunity, we can then choose to create positive self-talk, to transmute that negativity and lift ourselves up and recognizing us for the people and the beings and the incredibleness that each one of us are much like the the reflecting the positivity right it's kind of back to that like we have to be willing to reflect that positivity to ourselves first and foremost especially if we want to see that around us yes and likewise if we start with positive self-talk for ourselves and we're willing to recognize that we're not a single action mm -hmm that we take, like the choice I made was not the best choice in the moment, then we stop judging others for single choices that they mm. make because we realize they're not that action or that choice that they made in that moment. Maybe that wasn't the best choice they could have made, but they are not that choice. That is just that choice in that moment. Mm. Just as we don't 
then evaluate ourselves based on one choice. We don't then evaluate others based on a single choice. Now, if they keep making that choice over and over and over again, we can assess that behavior and decide if we desire to be around that behavior. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to just say, oh, you made that choice once. Mm -hmm. You're a bad person. Yeah. Because we're no longer doing that to ourselves. Right. So again, reflecting the positive. Beautiful. Uh, inspiration from past successes, number 10. And this is very much like the first couple. Well, it was very much like the previous nine. <laughs> um, figure. Well, yeah, go figure. Building um, upon. Yes. It's so important because if we do, one of the best ways to counter self-talk is to remember our successes and that, again, we aren't just one thing that occurs, right? We are, as you beautifully said, we are so much more than that. And there's so many things that we've done. And it's, and sometimes we'll take trivial things. Um, or that we'll take things that were big and make them trivial. Apologies. And that's, that's a detriment, right? And so if we can reframe that and just really recognize, even if it's just something that day, you know, it's like there's so much that we can do there's so many things we've overcome. We've all overcome in our lives. There's all, we've all had challenges and we're still standing here. So that means we've all overcome challenges. And sometimes it seems like it's a lot because we have our whole lives that we've been living. But when we can recognize the fact that we're still here, like we, I firmly believe that we are never, we are never given what we can't overcome. And just that alone really, really helps me start to remember my past successes and remember that I can take that, pull that into the now moment and continue that success and continue that positivity and moving into overcoming whatever challenge or obstacle that is there because I know that I'm enough. Yeah. And when that inner critic starts berating you with all of your past failures, right? The perceived failures. When you can take the time to have your successes right there and say, okay, well, yes, maybe that was a failure in one viewpoint, one perspective, but here was my success and I can pull inspiration from that. Mm. And where that may have been seen as from my inner critic's perspective, something that didn't move me forward as failure, these 10 successes moved me to the point that I am now. So I'm going to draw inspiration from that instead of being held back like an anchor around my waist from this failure that my inner critic is throwing at me right now. Yeah. And it's just one is uplifting you, one is sinking you. So this tool allows you to be lifted up. Love it. Yeah. Visualize your successes. So here we have the opportunity to really create where one is being inspired from the past and what we've achieved, even if it was yesterday mm -hmm. or 10 minutes ago. The next one is setting our sights in front of us and visualizing where we're headed from those achievable goals. And it's using your feeling too. And we talked about this in a previous podcast where it is really important to paint the picture, but along with painting the picture is Feeling the feeling that you'll have when you reach and you have that goal or that achievement occur. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it may show up and it may not look exactly like your visualization. So if all you've done is visualize what it will look like, then you may miss the actual collapse or the actual manifestation of it. But if you feel it, and you know what it feels like when it happens, then the moment that feeling hits you, you're like, this is it. This is it. 
And so it helps you consistently feel successful. You feel the success within you and that pulls you to that success. I love that. Yeah. Every future moment will happen in the present. So the more that we can feel it now and we can build on that like a snowball, then there's a greater chance we'll experience that in the future. Yeah, exactly. Very nice. Uh, Build a support system. I love this one because we never do everything alone. And anything worth doing, like anything that's ever been done that's really changed the world has never been just by one person. It's always been by a, a grouping of people, multiple people. That's what we're designed for. We're designed to be social and connected and to support each other. We know inherently that we're stronger together. And that's the beauty. Like The whole fun of this is to share. right? And so when we can have a support system, people around us, individuals around us that aren't tearing us down, but are actually lifting us up, and we can in return lift them up. Talk about a snowball effect. <laughs> I mean, that's really, that's uh, the that tide rises all ships, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's, an, it's an incredible, incredible thing. And that's why if you do look at people who have achieved many things in their lives, they always talk and think, like, hopefully they take the time to thank their team, right? You know, and those are the ones that you're like, wow, like, I, I see, I see what you're doing. And they've achieved so, so much. And then, but it's never, they, they'll say like, it was never just me. It was all the people around me that fueled me to, to take my, ne- take my next step or take the next movement or, you know, just when I didn't believe in myself, someone else around me did. And that was enough fuel to, to put onto the fire to, to ignite my next, my next achievement. And that's so special. A hundred percent. And that works in business. That works in friends and family and that works in relationships and it's just a beautiful beautiful thing to practice at all levels yes and again it goes back to making you feel very internally when you give gratitude to others Mm -hmm. you feel that connection that heart to heart connection because your heart reaches out you feel supported by them. They feel supported by you. And there's what they call that heart coherence that begins to occur. So it immediately pulls you out of your brain into your heart or into that feeling, that coherence energy. And our hearts have so many neurons in and of themselves. I won't get too sciencey nerdy here, (laughs) but the energy and the the neuron movement that happens there and the memories that are stored here, it's so strong that when we're in this space, yeah, the brain has more neurons, and but it also has the negative brain bias where the heart has a lot of neurons and it has the coherence connection factor that makes us feel warm and so much different than the brain does in that moment. And the inner critic is ready and waiting in that brain. The heart, not so much. Mm -hmm. So creating that community, that support system, allows you to feel that connection. And that's really what we're doing with this Heart Leader podcast, is creating that community wherever we are. Mm-hmm. long past going through the book that we're writing here with the inner critic the heart leader podcast will still exist as will Suivera, the organization that create that supports this podcast mm-hmm. so individuals are looking for a community our whole focus is love and supporting each other so just had to get that little absolutely that little one in there <laughs> And our last one, our last one comes from my time in the acting kind of community. And this is something we used to talk about all the time. And it just was a great tool for me when it came to how I navigated um, the inner critic and my, my inner critic, inner champion kind of battle back and forth. 
It's called Flipping the Script. And it's all about just getting in there and looking at something from the other perspective, like literally flipping the whole thing. So if you and I were running dialogue, we would flip it and suddenly I would be Austin and you would be Amber. Mm -hmm. And I would have to understand 100% what it is like to be Austin. And you would have to understand 100% what it is like to be Amber, right? And so it gives you a whole different way of looking at things. And when we talked last week about Sarah's journey, it was one of the things that she did. She flipped the script and understood what it would be like to be her colleague, Mm -hmm. real time, in the moment. And that caused her to look at herself differently. And that is the beauty of this is when you flip that script and you look at something from a completely opposing or the other perspective, it's like, oh, I need to look at myself from that viewpoint and I need to see myself in that other person. Likewise, if I flip the script on my inner critic, well, I have to see myself through the inner critic. And then likewise, the inner critic suddenly starts to see itself through me. And I might not like everything I see. Hmm. And I then realize the parts that I have an opportunity to shift. And so flipping the script just helps so much with that perspective shifting. Absolutely. I mean, basically, one through 12 are all about flipping the script from negative to positive. And that's, that's what it takes to, to not only build, but maintain a positive mental mind frame. So that's why I think this one is both last and all the way through at the same time. I mean, it's so, so important. Flipping the script to me also is kind of ties into that reality generator that we all are. And it allows us to make a choice and to choose how we see things. And 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 I think it's just so empowering where much like we were talking about when sometimes when it feels like we are disempowered uh, through a situation or we feel like something's happening to us, flipping that script into saying, well, you know, where, you know, what even just saying, like, if I have to take responsibility for something, just bringing that power back and moving into something positive, it's just it can be a, a whole different experience into in, in getting us not just out of a situation, but through a situation where we can feel like we can actually overcome and we have all that power and that positivity and that confidence and that connection. Also, I think it's a great practice for uh, empathy, sympathy, and compassion. Uh, It's so easy uh, to, as we were talking about, whether it's judging or, uh, you know, putting an inner critic on other people. But when we can feel like, as you were saying, like we're in someone else's shoes in this way and we're flipping that script, then it's like, well, you know, how would I feel in this situation? And uh, it can really create that connection, that oneness and that unity and really help build a strong support system and all these things that, you know, is, is a big part. So it's like this flip the script is literally in each one of these. Uh, and that's why it's such a powerful tool. Yeah. I It's one thing I say to myself very, very often. Mm-hmm. Because when you can really see something from the opposite perspective, in our world, we really do see things very black and white and very seldom do we see the shades of gray. Not saying that's good or bad. It just tends to be the dualistic nature of how we exist. And when you can flip the script and see the other side of the coin, you begin to see those shades of gray. Mm -hmm. You realize that maybe it isn't so one side or the other. Maybe it is this coexisting nature where both exist simultaneously and everything in between is also existing. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful thing that all of that can happen. And so even within me, when I flip the script and my inner critic is there and I find myself embodying that inner critic and I flip the script and I then embody my inner champion, 
I have the opportunity to say, what did my inner critic just show me? Do I need to condemn the inner critic? I need to silence it. That's for certain. But do I condemn it? Or can I say, what did I just learn from that experience now that my inner champion is back in the driver's seat? And I saw the gap where I have an opportunity to learn. Hmm. There are shades of gray. I don't desire to embody my inner critic, but I just learned something. So again, it goes back to allowing myself to learn, Mm -hmm. to be that student and to learn from the experience, Mm -hmm. right? That's where this is my starter kit. Amazing. And these are, these are 13 incredible tools that can be, any one of them can be implemented right away, which is one of my, again, my favorite parts about this list. Um, But as someone who created this list, my love, and someone who not just created it, but actually lives it and practices these. Like what is, what does a life look like for someone who begins to practice these and and put this into flow? Uh, I think that would be that really, when you started to paint that picture for me, it helped me realize like, Hey, this is all achievable. Yes. So in the beginning, it's, it's amazing how much you catch yourself throughout the day interacting with your inner critic. Mm. And I didn't realize, and even now in going through the exercise of writing this book, how often the inner critic kind of rises up and demands to be seen Mm. and says little things in the back of your mind. And when you're on autopilot and you're navigating through very busy days, which so many of us do, right? There's so much that we need to navigate in life that when that's on autopilot and we're not utilizing these tools, even one of them, pick one if that is the starting point, but it begins to bring to your awareness just how often you're potentially saying very critical things about yourself to yourself and that negative self-talk is just kind of flowing Mm. and you're holding yourself back from doing things that you're very capable of doing Mm. and you'll start to do more of those things that maybe you had held yourself back from doing or saying things to yourself or maybe to somebody that you care about in a more constructive and positive way than you would have been previously. Mm -hmm. I know the way that I communicated with others started to dramatically shift when I noticed how quickly I was just being, I would call it snarky (laughs) and not because I didn't love them, or I didn't desire to talk to them in the most positive and uplifting way. Of course I did. But I was so busy and so on autopilot that if somebody asked me a question in the middle of all of it, it was my inner critic that answered and not me. Mm -hmm. And so the moment I started becoming self-aware enough, then maybe it was only a few times during the day, but I caught it. And I shifted that because I was shifting it in my own awareness for how I was speaking to myself. Mm. And I didn't want to speak to somebody else worse than I was speaking, you know, to myself. Mm. So it improved my relationships and it improved my connection with my support system. And so then I started seeing them reflect that back to me. Mm -hmm. And so it just, it really started to change things. Mm -hmm. It started with you. But it had to start with me. With yourself. And do you think that, you know, maybe one, a way that someone could, could maybe implement this is maybe focus on one a week and, and really kind of just like, you know, put their energy and start with number one or anyone that they're thinking of and maybe do, you know, put their energy into that focus for one week and then do the next one and the next one. And, you know, knowing that it does, it could take months to really move in new habits, but Uh, Do you think that might be a great starting point for people or or, what would you recommend? Every person is so different. And that's one thing I have learned Mm -hmm. in being in support of individuals. So I really shy away from this is how you should do it. Mm -hmm. 
I would say know how you learn. Know how you integrate things into your routine. If you are someone who can take all 13 of these Mm -hmm. and just incorporate them and take off running, then do that. Mm -hmm. If you are someone who one a week is your pace, then absolutely take one a week. Otherwise, you're just feeding your inner critic and saying, well, she said in the podcast that I should be able to do it this way, and then I can't. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I don't want to feed anybody's inner critic. Do it the way that fits for you because that's going to be perfect in the way that perfection is, right? It's going to be progress. It's going to be progress um, because perfection is an illusion, yeah. right? So we have to begin to understand that we need to do things in our way and at our pace. And this whole book, there's like lists because lists work for me. Mm -hmm. And so I place them out there for who they fit for, but there are also stories and there are also like little things that are different for everyone because we are all so unique. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we need to start embracing that. Well said. I feel like it's a beautiful place to, uh, to wrap up after this. Awesome. So yes, embrace your unique nature. Take all of these tools, one of these tools, 10 of these tools, anything that fits for you. Our goal is to continue to be in support and service as we assist you in silencing that inner critic. We are going to continue from here next week in our journey of silencing that inner critic. And if you haven't had a chance yet, and you would like to receive 20% off for pre-registering for the book, you can head over to silenceyourinnercritic.com. Just enter some information, and we will make sure that when this book launches, you are notified and you get that 20% off. We will see you. Oh, I forgot to tell them about this amazing opportunity. When you pre-register for the book, you also get one of our best-selling workshops. It is the mirror technique. We covered it in one of our previous podcasts, but when you register, you get all of the emails that support you all along the way, and you get a video with me that will walk you through it in detail, and it is absolutely free. So you have that part of the package as well. Now, again, if you haven't had an opportunity and you want to make sure that you don't miss any of these valuable tools, these superpowers, it would be a great time to click the subscribe button below. It helps us more than we can possibly tell you. And if you are looking for a community to be that support system for you, one that is focused in love and there to lift you up, you have found it. This entire Heart Leader podcast is all about that. It is an extension of the organization Sui Vera, whose mission is completely focused in love and the heart-centered nature of humanity. So share, post some comments below, tell us what you're seeking and allow the community to uplift you and support you in your journey. Until next time, I am your host, Amber, and I'm here with Austin, and we look forward to speaking with you and seeing you here in the community.